What is going on guys, Vlad with SolusPLC.com here and in the previous video we talked about the one shot instruction, very very useful uh, instruction which activates at the rising edge of a condition. Now today we're going to be talking about two uh, sister instructions to the one shot which are called the OSR which is one shot rising and OSF one shot falling. Now these instructions are very similar in nature but provide a little bit more f flexibility to the programmer and allow you to create a little bit more uh, complicated routines and kind of save on how many bits you are using. Let's get into the example for today. So what we have in the first rung is essentially the same process start condition which we had before and this signifies a pseudo initialization of a certain process. In our case it's going to be some kind of a heating tank uh, so just picture that uh, being what we're uh, working with. So what I have here on the right side is the one shot rising and the one shot falling. So do notice that in this case, the one shot rising and the one shot falling are on the right side, which means they are output instructions. They are not uh, conditionals like they were for the one shot. Now that being said, it is slightly different in the way this activates because here you have two different bits. You have the storage bit and what you have what's called the output bit. Now the storage bit, you don't really need to worry about. That's exactly, that's uh, the bit that's getting toggled. So you can just put in any Boolean in there as long as it's unique to the process. That shouldn't matter too much. Now the output bit, you would use that as the bit which essentially activates uh, the one shot for that one cycle which we've discussed for the uh, one shot instruction. And the neat thing about the OSR and the OSF is that you can use this output, output bit all over the place, meaning that you are not limited to just that one branch of code, which was for the one shot. So uh, just to re-explain what, uh, what I mean by that is that if you have this one shot instruction, then the only thing that will um, execute through this bit is this move instruction and whatever branches off you know, underneath. Here you can use this output bit all over your program and essentially would be triggered based on this one time condition which leads to this one shot rising or this one shot falling and of course the bits do notice that they are different. So here it's one shot uh, bit 3 and here it's bit, uh, P one shot bit 5. Um, that being said, so the example is somewhat similar to what we had in the previous section, but it is expanded. So here, for example, like I was saying, I am using that P one shot 3 which is essentially bit three, which is the output bit of the one shot rising. But do notice that I use that in multiple locations. So I use that for three different um, essentially passes. And here I have the process temperature, which is stored in this register process temp two. Then down here, I have this minimum set point and down here I have this maximum set point. So essentially it's just uh, an example, but uh, you can use uh, the demo here is that you can use this bit all over your program. You're not restricted to a single use like you would with the one shot. Um, and then the difference, let's talk about the one shot rising with, uh, versus one shot falling. So what is the difference? So the rising talks about the way the signal is being uh, translated. So imagine that uh, whenever this condition is false, it means that your signal is essentially at the low level, right? So imagine this, uh, you're looking at me right now. So this is the low level. And then rising, meaning that the, the signal goes to a logic high, meaning that there is a rise for the signal, right? And this is the logic high. Remember, this is the rising, the signal low. So the signal goes from low and then it transitions to a high, which means that's the rising edge at which it triggers. So let's look at that in demonstration. So watch this bit, one shot bit three on this one shot rising. Like I said, as soon as this condition uh, becomes high, that's when the bit, the output bit should be high, but it only is going to be high, just like the one shot for one single um, scan of the PLC, which means that it will be high one time, moving this uh, process temperature into this initial temperature register only one time. So I'm going to control T, which will toggle this bit. You can also do so by right clicking and hitting this control, uh, this toggle bit, which tells you control T right there. Uh, but essentially, as you can see, this 24 got transferred into this 24 uh, register. Um, and what's interesting is that even if this process temperature gets updated, it's not going to transfer. Like I said, that's why this is a one time one shot, because it is only transferring one time at the beginning as soon as this became true. Um, and unlike the other conditions within the log ladder logic programming, it will not keep repeating that same instruction over and over again. 
Now, uh, let's look at the one shot falling. So remember, the one shot rising is when the signal goes from low to a logic high. The opposite is actually true for the one shot falling, as the name suggests. Uh, suggests it is going from a high to a low that's why it is falling so something which is high goes to a lower state uh, it means it is falling so do notice that right now in my final temperature I have zero because we had a transition to high which is the rising transition and once the signal goes to low meaning it's right now it's high and it transitions to a low this 56 got written into this register which is the final temperature and just like in the previous scenario it's not going to change even if the temperature updates so for example it becomes 453 it is not being stored in this register and also i guess this bit is not continuously energized like you remember the one shot is essentially highlighted here you will not notice this highlight because it only happens for a split uh split second which is one single scan of our processor. And uh, yeah, extremely, extremely useful. And everything, of course, in the other rungs, so rungs five and six, exactly the same effect has occurred. So the minimum set point got translated as soon as the rising edge was detected and it got set into this initial process minimum set point. And of course, on the falling edge, due to this P one shot bit five, which is stored in the one shot falling bit, once the process was de-energized, this minimum set point got stored into this final process minimum set point to uh, 52. And of course, just like anything else, this does not get translated until those edges are detected. So only on the edges uh, does this uh, move instruction uh, become allowed to execute. And similarly, of course, for the process max set point and process max set point for the final falling edge. So extremely, extremely useful, slightly more versatile than the one shot. But to be completely transparent with you, in most cases, I would just use the standard one shot instruction. And unless I really need to do something, I guess, different on the falling edge, that's when I will resort to the OSF. But the OSR has been, uh, I guess, proven to be very close to the one shot. Therefore, it has not been uh, that much useful in real life programming of control systems. So see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.